You can also look, you know, look at um, the Impala painting as part of your reference to guide your palette. Um, you'll see that as opposed to the to the palette that we used yesterday, where it was very rich in cadmiums and greens, we're not going to use that much green on this piece. There's very little green in, actually in it. So you will have to have, in addition to what you had yesterday, you'll need to add your uh, yellow ochres. You'll have to have your uh, cadmium yellow light and medium. You'll need burnt sienna, lots of burnt sienna. You'll need you'll need white. You'll need your diazonine purple. Um, all your umbers, if you have them, burnt umber and raw umber. Um, and of course, if, if for me, because since sienna, since there's a lot of oranges, if you're looking at this piece, there's a lot of orange and yellow in it. So anytime I'm working with a lot of oranges and yellows, I always, always, always put its complement down. So um, you'll need to have French ultramarine and diazonine purple on your palette as well. Um, you'll also need black. Okay? So once everybody's got their, they're like, yeah, I've got my palette ready. I'm ready to rock and roll. We'll jump in. Almost. So Almost. Uh, almost. almost. Now, you will notice that the photo reference that you're working from does not really look much like the actual painting that I did. Um, and I'm, I'm wanting to stress that anytime you're finding a really cool, for me, I should say this, I should talk for myself, if I have to do a particular subject, and I often will just use all kinds of references, whether the ones that I've taken myself or perhaps even ones that I found elsewhere. Um, I generally change it up. I don't do, um, I, I use the photo simply as a reference. I generally don't copy it verbatim. It's not like I'm looking at this and saying, ah, this is a perfect painting. I'm going to paint it just exactly like this. Um, you'll notice that in the photo reference, the colors are completely different. Um, I actually cool down my, my Impala immensely in temperature. And I also backlit it because I wanted it to look like it's it's got a sundown in the background, and so you know this is this was put together completely different than the actual photo reference. And so I always want to stress that these are references, just like the word means. It's a reference. It doesn't necessarily have to be copied. So when everybody says they're ready, we're going to jump in on this one. And oftentimes I don't always start a piece exactly the way that I did it the first time. Um, obviously, the first, the original piece is done much larger, and um, I'm going to just set this little thing here. I, oh yeah, I have my my iPad. Let me get that real quick. Excuse me, buddy. I'm going to get my iPad. Um, and if you are working off of an iPad, make sure when you're starting your pieces that you're zoomed out. You do not want to zoom in, and you you keep the zoom only when you're doing detail in a certain area. Otherwise, what happens is you can get a very distorted, um, it may become quite distorted because you, you, you concentrate on one area, say like the head, and then by the time you zoom back out, you're like, oh my gosh, this entire has a really huge head. So the, the iPad or any kind of tablet is an amazing uh, tool for us to use, but you must use it wisely. <laughs> do, not, do not abuse it. You must understand that you have to only zoom in when you're focusing on detail in a certain area. Okay? So we're, as soon as we're waiting for my iPad to warm up here. Are we talking about you, Linda? Is that, are, are you feeling? What if your neighbor does it? <laughs> your neighbor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at this. They're both pointing at each other. <laughs> she did it. For those, of the, for the folks who are watching who don't see what's going on here, of course, I have two of my wonderful students that are private students came along for the workshop, and they're both pointing at each other, saying, "Uh, uh it wasn't me." It was her, and they're pointing at each other. So, yeah, we have fun here. We have lots and lots of fun. So red. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by actually just sketching my Impala onto the canvas. Now, when I say sketching, I don't mean with a pencil. I know a lot of folks are, are, are because they're not really, perhaps they don't draw very often, 
They felt like they needed to sketch on. I get it. Um, uh, <laughs> she did it. And see, they're pointing at each other. I'm like, I didn't put his pointing fingers. <laughs> um, so, but when I, when, so I'm just going to do a very loose sketch until I'm satisfied with the, the anatomy and the um, proportions of my impala. And again, anytime I do a sketch, it's very loose in the, in the beginning. It may be a combination of doing a rub out, sketchy kind of thing, you'll see. Um, don't worry, if it, this is the way I wanna do it, I know half of us already have it sketched on. <laughs> so I would, you know, but for those who don't, this is how I'm going to approach this piece. I'm just gonna take a little bit of uh, paint thinner. Actually, I'm gonna take a lot of paint thinner. And I'm working, um, I'm working off my, I have my palette here is an Edge Pro Gear. It's a great, great product. I love it, love it, love it. Um, but I'm also working a little taller than I normally do for this, because the canvas is a 16 by 20. So I'm, I'm just going to try to get my, my proportions correct. Do you use a burn amber? I am. I'm just, it, it almost doesn't matter at this point. I'm just using mostly paint thinner. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, I just want to get my um, my you know you know proportions correct. So I may um, um, just basically very just very um, I'm, I'm doing a very like I said a loose sketch here. Now an impala, of course, is one of uh, Africa's beautiful antelope have very long legs. These animals can jump and clear. They can go right over a um, a vehicle, especially if something's chasing them. <laughs> like say, there's a leopard or a lion chasing them. They can go jump right over that vehicle. Um, they're beautiful. They're they're absolutely beautiful animals, and. Uh, I'm actually drawing it in sections, almost as if um, I was piecing this animal together. <laughs> I'm doing, you know, so right now I'm on its wither. I'm going over its shoulder area. I'm just kind of moving down through the piece a little bit. The original of this painting that I did, uh, that you can see in the background here of the, of the frame, um, is actually heading to uh, Vancouver for the uh, Artists for Conservation uh, um, National, you know, their international exhibit. You, you touched on yesterday packing your pictures, ha and this has to be kind of restricted. There, um, actually, it depends on the, you know, whomever you're 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 sending your work off to. Um, in the case for AF, the AFC, they are, you know, because they often will reuse to send it back. Um, for a show, there's companies like Uline and some of the other companies that you can actually buy packing for paintings. Um, they will often have uh, um, um, like like they'll wh where they where they'll have areas like sponge to protect the corners and the and okay. will secure the painting within the box in a way that. Um, um, it keeps it pretty stationary and safe. Now sometimes when I'm working, I could see when I'm making mistakes right off. And um, sometimes it takes me a minute to see them. So bear with me. Um, you know, and the Impala's amp, their, their horns are very cool. And, and that was something that I had a lot of fun when I did this piece. Um, they almost look like it's one big horn here in this particular pose here. Um, I, will, I will keep moving it around until I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Um, obviously, there's times when I will rework a piece until it's, till it's just so, till I get it just right. And uh, usually this is probably not going to be any different. I'm moving up the hip a little bit. And this is why I like to work um, on uh, with a very loose, wet paint when I'm starting off a piece, because it allows me to make corrections just as I'm moving through it. 
sort of like how when we did the rub out yesterday, we're not committed yet. I can actually keep working this until I'm happy with um, the proportions of this animal. Now, I know that there are people who probably go to Africa often and would be able to correct me in a heartbeat. And believe me, if they're out there, they're going to. <laughs> they're going to say, uh, Sue, you know, you, you, you didn't quite get that right. And so I have to, I, I really will try to... Uh, Tell them to send you to Africa and you can get that's it. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, the, the, that would be awesome. I uh, really do want to go to Africa. That's that, no doubt. Um, it's like I said, it's definitely on my radar. And there's, there are some really nice um, opportunities, even through organizations like that I've referred to before, that have a lot of the artists that, that they, they go, they go often. And, um, and they even have really nice uh, trips set up for artists. I mean... Um, so you can do photography. Yeah, so you can get your references. Everybody who tells me says, once you go, your life has changed forever. You're, you're <laughs> Is everybody, can everybody see what I'm doing? Does he have it going on? <laughs> oh yeah, he does. I'm sure he's got it going on. Uh, I, re I have to say, I really like Larry's system over there. He's got... I'm going to have to check that out. Although, I generally stand at the easel when I work. And you can see I'm spending a little bit extra time on the, on the, on the feet and leg, you know, the legs, simply because I know that this animal is very, uh, um, you know, he depends on those legs to get him over, to leaping over large, uh, large animals. Large animals in a single bound when you're, you know, to evading uh, uh, predators. You know, his leaping skills and are, are, are definitely paramount for his survival. So I just want to make sure I'm getting getting the important stuff correct. So you can see as, it, as I'm moving through it, I'm getting a little bit more confident with my structure and placement. Um, I'm using a little bit more paint and getting some of, believe it or not, even, even suggesting where some of the um, dark values are going. Uh, I do like my dark values. And then I can see where I need to fix things. Like I already know I have to bring down his abdomen. And because I, I and, and it's a good idea. I know a lot of you folks don't necessarily draw very often. So if, if that's the case, see like I'm bringing his body down a little bit. Um, and I know this because I can look where things are in relationship to something else. So, for example, I'm looking at this area, what I would probably call his gaskin, if he were a horse, this area of his body. And I can see in my photo reference here where his, in the gaskin area, his abdomen comes down right there. So I had it up here. You know, actually, you will have some white area up here, so I can go ahead, but it works out okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Um, It's, it's a matter of just knowing where, and then this is where the elbow goes. So this is making sense. Looking what something is in relationship to another thing. I know that sounds like a bizarre way to say it, and I'm sure there's a much more accurate, effective way of saying what I just said. But I'm here, I'm looking at the elbow, comes down here. Um, here's the, you know, the arm, the forearm. I'm looking at the muscle that's right here. There's a muscle. And if you're looking at your photo reference, you know what I'm talking about. You can see that muscle. And so I'm just kind of play, playing it down here. This is, you don't really see where this um, knee joint is here, but there, there's a knee here someplace. And very long, elegant legs these animals have. And I'm just going to kind of keep that sort of straight like that. There's an um, area here. And I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good about my placement. The leg here is very close to the other one, actually. So we'll get this in here in a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to that because I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the, this needs to be even longer because this is, or these need to be shorter. But 
they actually come to about the same place. So I'll actually have to shorten up these back legs just a little bit. Um, this is going to be here. So you'll see that I'll even start to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm going to take this away. Actually, if I can, I may have to use a really clean brush. How's everybody doing? Everybody had a good sleep last night? Mine kind of looks like a stick figure. Uh, <laughs> a stick figure? <laughs> but he said he had nightmares about the class. He had nightmares about the class? No, I know that's not true. And I'll put this, goes up. So it's kind of straight. There's like an area right here that's straight. And then it goes up. Then it goes bent. So I think I'm okay on that part. That's you know, very. And some of this is going to get fixed as I'm working through it. This is a lot thinner. He's got like a little thing here, like a little. But I won't be able to get that detail-y stuff in yet. This is, he's got that very broad head that comes down. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let me see here. That's, that's that elbow. I'm moving down through the arm again. Let's see here. This kind of comes here. And we're checking this out here, looking at the... Okay, I think he, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go back through here. I think I have to shorten the back legs up a little bit. Sometimes I'll go ahead and take some paint off. How do you paint off with the... Just rub it off? Yep. The I'm just rubbing it off. And I mean, like I said, remember, initially this is going to be very yeah. loose. I'm going to knock it off. This is where the dark areas are. So what I'm going to do is just make a little mark for myself. I'm going to do it in dark. Because I'm going to suggest that this is where his... If you're, if you're, if you're a horse person, I would say that this is its... Uh, fetlock. <laughs> I'm sorry. To use, I use what I know. I'm sure they maybe have a different word for this on, a, on an Impala. And this would be down here. I'm just putting these down here because I just want to make sure that I'm using, getting my proportions correct before I start laying anything down. I'll walk around here in a few minutes and see where we're all at. And again, I'm just going to put in dark areas where I see them. It, they're not, and I'm still using the paint very lightly. There is no thick impasto paint going on here whatsoever. Um, this is this is almost like a wash of paint, but it's how I it's how I get to see things. It's how I will visualize the painting as it's going. You know, as I'm as I'm working through it. Um, you know, I'm also being conscious of anatomy now. You don't have to be an animal science person to get this part. It doesn't, doesn't hurt to have some experience with that, but it really comes through just simple observation. You know, this, we all know this animal has a spine, yes? So we're going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and emphasize where I know that spine is. I know it's moving through here, and it will go over the top of the back and through. Um, so I know it's here. So I'm, I'm, I know his hip is somewhat elevated on this side, just simply from the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and suggest that it is. Um, and it comes up here, so it's slightly elevated. And I, and I don't expect you all to get too hung up over that, but I just, I feel like I would be amiss if I didn't say something about it. 
I'm looking at his, his uh, wither here. What is a wither? Uh, wither, the, the um, <laughs> I keep using horse anatomy and I apologize, but this, this hump right here that I'm painting, can you, if you look up on the, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's almost like his shoulder blade. But it sticks up higher, and it's about level. So I'm looking at, like, when I talk about painting where things are in relationship to other things. For example, here is what, if he was a cow, yeah. <laughs> this would be called, you know, we have hooks and pins, but it's part okay. of his pelvic region here. I see that this, this I'm, I'm emphasizing with a dark purpley color here, just so for, for emphasis. This area here, I can see that his wither is higher than this mark here. Here's where his uh, spine is. Here's where the, actually I'll drop that hip a little bit, but it's where the other hip is. His hooks and pins are over here. Then you have his back is roached a little bit or, or, or elevated. Then here's his shoulder. Okay, or his wither as I was calling it. And then it kind of swoops down like this. You can see it. And then here's some area here where there's this just kind of dark area of where his uh, neck has little rolls in it. So I'm going to walk around here in a second. I'm pretty satisfied with how that looks. And I am going to come by and look at everybody's piece and see where we're at, okay? So let us take a look. The only thing is, I don't think that's right. I was look, trying to look at that. You're right. And then if I don't do something with that, guess what? This, this stuff. Why is his hocks touching? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he standing hock, hockney? Ha ha hockney. Now, I'm going to ask you, I know that you guys had sketched on here earlier. I'm not going to call you out. I'll try to talk wider. Are, are you using, using a kicked out of class? You won't get kicked out of class. But are you using a projector? Mm -hmm. No. How, how was it you got your sketch on? Okay. Okay. That, that's probably But I more. just did the out. Yeah, and that's fine if it that's helps you get it together. Mm -hmm. um, I always want to warn people, especially if they're using projectors, all mm -hmm. artists mm -hmm. use them, but sometimes they distort the picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I always throw that out there because we, it looks cool when you're looking at it, um, and you think, oh, this is perfect. But then when you start, when you look at it later, you're like, yeah, I've never mm -hmm. used it's projector. not a, a lot of artists do, and a lot of portrait artists use them. Um, I, I mean, a lot of really big names use them, and that's okay, because those people already know how to draw. So yeah. they know how to fix it. It's just to get the proportions down at first, but sometimes projectors, even projectors can askew them. So, but no, you're not so bad on your drawings. I, I'm not gonna, how about that? Well, when you start putting your paint down, like here, I'm gonna so suggest like, this. it's funny um, because I'm looking off the main reference as opposed to my painting, and I already see corrections that I should have made. So oh, yeah. it's, it's okay. I'm not going to sweat it as long as you're getting a basic. Okay. You're going you off of my, right here. it's funny, you're going off my painting as opposed to the yeah. actual reference. And since I'm going off the actual reference, I'm probably gonna uh, be more accurate. This is yeah. my second time <laughs> painting this animal, right? Yeah. right? So with it being the second time that I'm painting it, I'll get better at it, just like everybody does the second time around. Mm -hmm. You've gotten a little bit more practice. Um, you know, it's, it, so I just want to go ahead and emphasize that it's you're going off of a different picture. You're going off my painting. So, yeah. but it's you're, you 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 all look okay. I just want you to just keep keep moving through it. Keep your reference. Keep focused on your reference because you can see this is a little bit different. I'm yeah. painting this one a little bit. Um, yeah, this is really different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really different. <laughs> so, so this one. What is were you thinking? <laughs> well. Not the right color. Actually, but, well, the color was changed intentionally. I wanted uh, it to look like it was looking in the sundown. Um, I had done a, p a previous painting in the, of a lioness that, you know, it's funny. At sundown is a magical time in Africa, and that's when your predators are waking up and going yeah. hunting, and it's when all your um, prey animals become very vigilant, <laughs> yeah. and they're, they're, they're watching. So in this painting, I called it Sundowner too, because I had already done a painting of a lioness hunting in a sundown which, where she was backlit. Basically the same color palette uh -huh. um, that was actually purchased by one of my um, collectors in Miami. So I'm actually hoping that uh, my collectors in Miami will see this one and think, this is a perfect match for our first Sundowner. <laughs> see, it's all marketing. <laughs> is this back here? I'm not sure what that is. 
This is the neck. Yeah. And yeah. this is the shoulder. This is the wither. The wither, you're yeah. going to have that a little bit higher. Um, you've got yours a little. I know you. Yeah, you were still. Yeah. 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 I didn't know. It's okay. It'll be okay. His legs will be much thinner than what you have in your drawing. So we'll we'll work through that. It'll be okay. But uh, but anyway, I I did that. So I changed the lighting completely to comp to to be a to confuse you. To confuse you. Yeah, actually, yeah, it was more for my pleasure. My name is. I just saw the kids Okay. Let's. Okay. I, would, I don't mind. Right. Well, it's a, it's, we're going to fix that real quick. We're going to get that laid where it needs to be. Um, well, the, la the, the legs are actually more in towards each other. So it'll come down to here and then go out. So this will go away. Are you using the acrylics or oil? That's the way it's, that's what it should be. It's almost like he's, he's not paying on his laser. No, do, you have your, do you have your actual reference? Yeah, the actual? No, 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 that's my painting. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Oh, I thought he, I, he caught himself on purpose. Well, yeah, but you got to go through this yeah. crazy yeah. thing if you got to come up there. Why didn't you just see that? I actually put, um, I sent it, I sent everything to you. Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Because, um, but you, it'd be, this is pretty, this will be pretty accurate too. You'll have this. No, I know this is not the picture. That could be my point. You know, like what? Yeah, it just, I didn't even download it. It has more details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have your hawks usually are pretty matched here. Okay, now let's see. This reminds me of a butt song. Reminds you about what? The butt song. Look the size of the butt. Oh. Hey, hey, Becky, did you see her butt? Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. You're like, I like the butt. I see butts that again not lie. Okay, yeah, yeah. for mix a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since we're since we're um like yeah live streaming, <laughs> I don't oh, yeah. I don't want to mix a lot to come get me now. <laughs> Were you singing my song, Big Butts? Uh, oh, that would okay. be me. Yeah, I'll say, and, and you need to come after Linda. <laughs> oh. oh, we used to sing that when I was a lifeguard. When you were a lifeguard, you sang Almost 30 it? years ago. <laughs> Not hard to believe. Almost 30 years ago? Uh-huh. When that song was out. Oh. Some guidelines here on this. Okay. For some reason, I'm not. This these brushes are pretty soft brushes. This yeah. That's a that's a white bristle. Wow. You, I bet you've used this a few times, haven't you? Carving, uh, you, you see things because you're a carver. You probably tend to see things very three-dimensionally anyway. Thank you. 
This will help give you some guide on, on to where the where thing where the structure needs to go. Okay, and I'll let you you jump on it. Yeah. Okay. Should I get up? Yeah. <laughs> Should I get up? I love it. Should I get up? Yes. Absolutely. We'll get you. We'll get you back. On. We'll get you back on track. I like that you have the actual reference here. No, no. I gotta have a big, big old brush. Can go with this guy here. In your pink one. Okay. If I look at this, and this is her, his, his, his spine. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. is here. It's We'll get you to that spot. We'll get you to where you can just take off with it. You'll be like, oh, I got this. I got this. Now you're going to be singing it all day. I know, I know it's still in my head from yesterday. Which song is it? The wheel of the Oh, it's all the songs. At least it wasn't. I won't say it because I don't mean everybody having that earworm. Yeah, no. I'm not going to do it. But it starts with baby and ends with short. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not going to do that to you. I, I'll be honest. I'm too old for that one because I don't have kids. And, you know, but I've heard of it, but you know I've never heard it. That's well, good. we can we can have that. We can uh, remedy that for you. No, Y'all can solve that problem. No, no thank you. We yeah. could do that I'm, for you. I'm perfectly happy with the wheels on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it on the Today Show. Initially, when you're putting, getting it down, on, get, getting it down, your um, I got it too, still too wide. And 
legs are very skinny, so it's not all, it doesn't go all the way out to here, okay? You know, I can choose you here. This looks very, from where its body is, it's very straight. I'm trying to take that off. This is all not here. I will say to anybody who's a painter, if you learn anything from me at all, that it's, it really isn't a bad idea for everybody to, to at least draw some. Um, and, and so much of it, you know, even if it means exercises like time study, you know, short time drawing sketches, it will, you, it will benefit, you will benefit so much from it that You know, you take all these workshops. I know a lot of you go from workshop to workshop. How many folks here have actually taken a, a drawing workshop? I know. Okay, Amanda has. This is my second. <laughs> Your second drawing workshop? <laughs> yeah, it's been the last time, so you have not. And, it, and that always surprises me. That really surprises me because um, it, I think it's really important. And I, I, um, but about this book I'm drawing now. Yeah. I know. I one time bought a book on Pilates <laughs> and read it from cover to cover, and I, I never that. understood why I didn't get yeah. thin. <laughs> why it didn't work for me. <laughs> well, and then, then, it, then it's like you got to grab the bull by the horn, so to speak, and make well, it work for you. Buddy's done you, great you, with this you picture. You drawing workshops? I have not, but I'm now starting to wonder <laughs> if perhaps that would be a bad idea. I think That'd be great. I think it would be a good idea, um, especially for t it would probably be something that would be where a lot of people would be surprised that it would have nothing to do with what I normally do. Um, it would be a lot of times uh, studied you know, where I, where you start off doing a five second sketch, right. a ten second sketch, and you have to learn to move really fast. You would simply come with charcoal, like uh, fine charcoal, and. Um, um, newsprint paper. Seriously. It's, it's, it's not something you, you go home and hang up on your wall. But it would be like boot camp for a lot of people because um, it would be very grueling and exhausting. You won't have anything pretty to hang on the wall, but you'll have learned so much from just that experience. I've done a few of those, but there wasn't any teaching involved. It was just come in and do it. Well, yeah. Teaching, the teaching part comes from doing. I mean, it's, uh, it's knowing that you, you've got to do it. Um, I learned more watching the teacher do it than... Right. Than well, and, and a lot of us do learn from watching. I mean, I do too. I get it. Um, I have I to have, do it. I've been told that you don't have to know how to draw a pen. Um, perhaps, but you do know how to draw. You, but to paint well, you yeah. should. Yeah. There's a difference, and I mm -hmm. I don't know any professional artist, and I'm not saying you have to be a professional artist to do it, but I'm saying that um, you really should know how to do. It. It's sort of like walking and running, you know. Right. I agree. Uh, it's very very important. important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you know, I remember you had set pads for one of your workshops here. How did that work out? You had set pads again? Yeah. It worked out good. It was just three days and three different uh, models. So it wasn't like. Um, I didn't know when I was doing it. worked for the same model. And it like after the first day. Did. So you did, did you do it in, um, and then we you did kind of a uh, uh, Bruce Lee type work where you did it in gray? Because you know that won the Portrait Society of America big, big award. He, and I mean, and he's such a, as you know, just an easygoing kind of guy. Uh, that's going to happen to a nicer fellow. Um, but he's, he is good at what he does, and he's had a great instructor. And I wish he had, he had that time that I would have loved to take it instruction. 
Now, yeah. you know, I know that, that you have brought a lot of people from here. It's, and it's sold out now, but you said people brought their thing. Um, the key would have been what I would have enjoyed. It's fun. It's really, and you can learn a lot. Take these back. Both of them out of town. Right. Larry and Faye were two citizens, but nobody from the local art club here in the county were two citizens. I was kind of discouraging, but I'm done doing it for them. I'm doing it for me here in Vaughn if they want to come. Right. Yeah, it looks like you're doing it. I think we're going to start. I'm just going to start. You know the lakes are not going to be dispatched with leaves, right? So you're going to thin these down a little bit. And by looking at yours, too, I can see mm -hmm. more of my mistakes by looking at the photograph. Right. The, the photograph, I mean, there's all kinds of mistakes in my painting, to say. Okay. So, I mean, you know, yeah. it's funny, and I was, like, I was telling um, Anne and Faye, this is my second time around yeah. on this painting, so I'm already getting better at it simply because I'm doing it again. I love doing it with the phone approach and staying away, but I'm and, just going to be good at it. And it's important to be able to get to where you can. And these are really nice and fun. Thank you. 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 You've got your neck and head a little bit too big compared to the rest of them. I'll, I'll get to get you on, on track at least. Now, what too big? The neck and head. Oh, yeah, I'm going. Okay. But you at least, like I said, you Either that or the body's too small. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we want to, I always try to get, let's see, where is a track? So are, are we filling it in now? Or? Not yet. Let me get, let me get back to where I, I am, because yeah. I'm afraid that if I get everybody ahead of me here, that's one of the main problems I have with this, this, this workshop, is getting everything in proportion. Right. And I know, and I was and I was saying something mm -hmm. earlier to, um, I don't know if you can hear what I was saying to um, Anne and Faye, that a lot of times, like when we get in there and start drawing on, I get, I understand because we're all trying to save some time and um, get it on there and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And I know a lot of people who actually use projection, and projection is a great tool. I'm not going to diss it. I've used it myself, um, but it, I also know how to draw. And oftentimes, the projection or or tracing or of any sort will distort, will become somewhat distorted, and that will make for a, a difficult situation to, to correct because when we're looking at it, it looks pretty normal. So I'm actually looking, I almost always start off at the hip area. And knowing that the legs, the legs of an impala are pretty, pretty long, okay? So I'm just kind of looking at this, this angle here, and I'm just going to um, start, this is just usually where I start, and, I, and I'll, I'll keep it super loose. I'm going to try to do it a little bit smaller, because I want to uh, be able to include the whole thing on here. I know there's, there's a nice big, um, so if I see a line like this, and I think, okay, that's pretty pretty straight, then it comes down to this area here, and that kind of goes pretty straight. There's a little, there's a bulge here. I'm not, I don't really always think about every step of the way of like, okay, here's the gaskin area of the of the leg, and I'm going to pull this in. I'm not always doing that, but I do. I, w I would be lying if I said that I wasn't using some of my knowledge and anatomy to help yeah. put this in. But it's not, it's not. Um, Imperative that you could know all these things. And, um, and the mm -hmm. reason I say that it isn't is because uh, observation, just strict observation. So now here, these are the hawks. I see that they're pretty accurate. You had kind of done that too, so that was good. Yeah. Those were the area that you already know. Okay, so I know these hawks are matched up. So then I'm going to go back to basically that way down. You see that they're, they, they, yours is pointy here, but they spread out. So then I'm just going to spread out. Um, but you know, but she's pretty much yeah. kind of matched here. So I'm going to just do that. And even if I had to stop and then go to a different area of the painting, it's okay. Now, what you can't see is the inside of this. Is, 
can't get anything from coffee. Right, and it's, I mean, and that's just because I understand the whole thing. But if, if you're going just on observation, you, you see that not that's pretty straight area. Yeah. Whereas this is, and I think Larry was kind of looking at it thinking that this lady is bothering me because it's, it doesn't look, uh, you know, it, 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 it probably didn't seem to fall into his cottage. Uh, we know that there's signs there. We know that it's there. That's actually his eye and that's his tail. And that, and that only becomes because I, I know that's what it is. Um, and that's not your job. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, and I want to learn how to do the horses. So I'm moving it up, but I'm moving my things up, and if I have your bucket list, yeah. then I can swing it out. Number this one, is why I like to work but this with doing these like this. My, uh, and I'm wildlife, that's out. good too because pretty, pretty close to my original the horse is going to have a lot of uh, things, but I don't want to do the whole body. I just want to talk about my head. There's that, that yeah. hip because it is a little bit dropped. Right. Um, so I have that in there. I, this this line here helps me see things, I'm going to put it in. I see it right there, and I'm going to start to scoop it up. 
there's a little, like, you've got that little, little roll, whatever that little thing is there. Yeah, okay. And it's, so far, you know, you're maybe not as inaccurate as I thought, but it looked at first, but it was, too, so. Right. This comes out straight here. Back here. I'll find that one. Yeah, there's a little bit. And, kind of and I think that would be better. Because they have that right here, this very large portion of the forehead. And there is some stuff here. That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. His ear is and when you start adding the color, a lot of the stuff This is dark here. Um, and so this is going to come down a little bit here. So the I'm line is going to fall the line. This is here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this turned out good. You didn't bring that. Oh, well, oh, now I can just put that up. Yeah. And so there's always going to be some refined layers. I would pray that for you. I've got it on. I'll be ready for this. How's everybody doing? Probably. Oh, I'm doing great. They're doing great. I'm sure we're about to. Now the antlers don't, I mean the horns don't be, those were going to be the things that's going to be very fun but challenging to do because they are, they have that neat spiral to them um, and they have all the great highlight. I have gotten into lately really enjoying painted horns. I just recently did a, a ram that I really enjoy. I've done the, the kudu piece which is also going to be in this big show in um, uh, Vancouver. And kudu has a very spiral do you, do you go to Vancouver when your pictures are displayed? I was there last year for the show. It's the uh, it's the uh, Archer Conservation International uh, Nature and Wildlife Display. You know, their big show. And there's books that come out. If you go on to AFC or ArtistsForConservation.org, you can learn all about this big show. You can see, and each artist that's in, is represented in this in this room. Um, has uh, their own website, even through that site. Mm -hmm. um, and you can go and look at all these cool artists that are in there. Okay. Uh, and if you are, are you, how many here buy a lot of artist magazines? Anybody? Yeah, I do, unfortunately. Okay, good. Well, if you, next, in September's issue, um, September's issue of, um, uh, of Western Art Collector, um, they'll have a whole big article for Artists for Conservation They'll have a write-up. There'll be a write-up on me in that magazine, oh. and they'll be have they'll have one of my ad, ads for it, which I've never had an ad <laughs> in a magazine like this before. But mm -hmm. they offered it to us at a reduced rate. The ads, so I thought, you know, what do I have to lose? Just <laughs> try and, and uh, but anyway, it's a. Uh, uh -huh. I definitely tell anybody to go to artistsforconservation.org. It's a great organization that supports wildlife uh, and habitat and uh, allows us as um, artists to be able to give back. So um, a lot of the sales that are made through our website on artistsforconservation.org, um, we can have go to whatever conservation effort we choose. And um, so a lot like, for example, this Impala piece, if it sells on the show, um, I've, I've got a percentage going towards, uh, you know, whatever wildlife oh, okay. that they can sell. Yeah. And I can even make it, even if it's, even if it is an African animal, I can, I think mine goes to the, uh, the www, um, wildlife, I don't know what did you say the, uh, I can't think, website was? Artistsforconservation.org. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get that. You'll get to see the Silent Skies mural, which is also a very thing, a very cool thing that I'm very proud of. And I have it, it's actually, you can come to Kingsport, Tennessee, and you can see the, uh, we have it up until September, 
and I was very proud to be able to get that here. Um, is it at a museum or something? It's gallery? currently, the original is in China right now, oh. um, but it displayed in several different uh, museums here in the United States. Um, I put a picture of them. Yeah, and that can show you what the, um, and okay. it represents the 678 endangered species of uh, birds worldwide. The mural was participated 160 artists from 15 different countries from all over That's the world what participated I did, yeah. in it. And I was yeah. one of them. I have six pieces it's in the mural. Wow. Spread it out through your whole thingy there. Like zoom in. Right, I think you're, you're no, you spread it with your fingers. You know, spread it. There you go. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I think you're, I think you're okay. So you'll be off to the race. To your picture. That's, huh? that's what I did. When I get to where I'm, I took a I'm picture like, oh so I can no, see I'm gonna run the legs off the canvas. Because if I put what my big picture, do? she can't uh, see. Grass. So I just did grass. So I don't have to worry. I'm telling. I'm telling on myself because. Like everybody else. Honey, I need your tip. That's the silent sky's mural. When my husband saw it, he said, If you look up on the screen, oh my goodness. That is right across from my screen. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. That is right across from my screen. I was really proud because King's Court Tennessee was the first to have it displayed on vinyl. The original is actually made up of 8x8 canvases. And so when we first started with AFC, they, they oh. were only going to display it inside, in areas that can hold a 100 foot mural, because it's 100 foot by 9 feet. Wow. So, because it's all made up by 8 by 8 canvases. So I suggest, why don't we have it displayed on vinyl, then we can have it displayed in more than one area. And um, they, they thought that was a pretty good idea. So um, even though the original mural has traveled, and it's traveling all over the world right now, um, here in the United States, we were the first to have it printed on vinyl. It's in Kingsport, Tennessee. And then you can also go to, um, I think, the uh, Sonora Desert Art Museum in Tucson, Arizona. Also has it on vinyl now. Um, I've talked to, you know, I try to talk to a lot of zoos that I work with. Um, Miami Zoo said they're interested in having it printed on vinyl as well. And so we're trying to get it out there to as many places because it does create awareness oh, for um, the 678 endangered, red-listed endangered species of birds. And oh, so, nice. yes, yeah, so that's a project I'm very proud of. Well, where's that's your chair? Good project. She's sitting on. She can't get it. Okay. Uh, did you, were you not, were you standing the whole time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at you. Now you gritted. That's a smart thing. Uh, I'm not allowed to She gritted over here. here. I'm not, yeah, I'm not even touching yours. Yours looks pretty good. Oh, very, you're, you're pretty good on that one. Let's see here. Okay. Oh. Put a grill on the she, she went ahead and rented hers out to help her yeah. see it. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I'm always, you know, it, it's, I, I do, I do recommend that people mm -hmm. just draw a little bit. Mm -hmm. I always think it interesting mm -hmm. when people will ask, you know, do you, you know, I would love to teach a drawing workshop, but it's really not something you need to pay for. <laughs> this is something that you can do on your own, and I definitely recommend it. This is a very If I'm here, I see the two hops. If I see the two hops here, then I'm going to build from one area down. So hard. Yeah. What are we looking at? Oh, yeah. Gritting is a is a great tool. Yeah, 
once we start actually doing application of paint, we're, we're in a good spot. It's okay. So. All right. And this is amazing. We're going to see what you're at. <laughs> She's all. Yeah. I, I think it looks okay. I'm not going to, because you had an interesting um, approach to how you got that on there. So, yeah, I mean, your, the refinement will come, but you know, the, know that this, this area is probably a little bit higher here. Yeah. Um, Just how good that you got out is quite a lot of life, is it? Okay, that's good though. <laughs> if you figured out that you need to do something to, I know I just emphasized that a little too high, but this is going to bring that out a little bit. This here, take that off. Right, you know, you can look at the. This will come in and then go out. Um, you know, the spine is like this is going to be over. This, this I got a great up there. shift and the night shift take over and the day and during the day the impala and the other prey animals um they're eating they're doing their life they're you know they're having their children they're, they're fighting they're doing what they do and then but most of the time that's when the big cats are sleeping um they're resting while it's hot well at sundown that's when the big cats are waking up and these guys are going like oh no now they're now they have to wake up and be mm -hmm. mindful of the fact that they may be on someone's dinner. So this is when that's I call this one the sentinel. That's why I did that in a, uh, in a sundown kind of at, you know that type of. Now these these front legs 
Even though if this is if this is the hawk on here, mm -hmm. the hawks are lower. They're a little bit lower on these legs. So I'm just going to kind of suggest that you've got it cut off. But that's I just wanted to give you that. But you're in a good. Everybody seems to be in a good place. I think we're ready to ha -ha, jump in here and we'll start painting. And it's time for me to take a sip. I can get back to my piece and look at it. Since I've, since I've got where I was doing everybody else's sketches, I should be better at this by now, right? So I'm going to look at mine and go, oh boy, and there needs to be some corrections made. So here, turn this on. I've had a hard couple of days. I think this is my baby. It's not more than 15 minutes. Okay, let me see where we're at. Okay. Did you ever get you an iPad? Did you ever get you an iPad? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where's your big one? It's at home. I didn't want to get paint all over it. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. Like I did logo. yesterday. Did you get paint on yours? I got paint everywhere for some reason. Actually, I'm feeling pretty good about what I did so far on this. Now, again, I'm, I'm going ahead and stating it again because I know I said it before. For those working off their iPads, do not zoom out too soon in your work. Linda. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Did you see this one? I got a picture of your big one on my iPad, and look how well it is after I couldn't see it. Uh, yeah. That's how, what I'll paint by now. Well, I was going to say, and I, I, I'm, I'm also stating something too. It's better if you can work off your reference because it's probably more accurate. Keep in mind, this I paint when I did this one. I painted it in the studio. Just kind of jumped in. As you see, that's normally how I paint. I am not one who, who, uh, you know, usually draws things to over and over and over and over again. And um, so now that I've actually drawn a few Impala uh, today, I think I'm going to be better at it. <laughs> so this is probably going to be a little bit more accurate than the original piece that I did. I mean, not that it was inaccurate, but the ac but closer to what the reference of my that I was working off of. How long did it take you to paint the first one? Well, it's hard to say because I'm generally working on more than one piece at a time. Uh, I usually have three or four pieces going, and then sometimes I take breaks. See, like I'm already looking, I've got that too hunchy, so I'm going to correct that. Ten years and three days. <laughs> it, it, I'd say, well, honestly, to give you an, a ballpark, Couple, maybe <laughs> I don't even know how to do that. Um, probably a, a solid time working on it a week, mm. a week. But I, like I said, I I don't work on any one piece um, until it's complete, unless it's a commission. And even that's not true. I've got a very large commission at, uh, that's on my easel right now, and I'm anxious to get it done. Actually, the, my because my clients always asking for updates you know this it's also I want the kind like I usually this is I probably shouldn't talk about this stuff but um, I usually when I'm taking commissions take half down at the start and then the half at the completion and it's a good it's a good commission so uh, I'll be anxious to go ahead and get that get that done and I know my clients are going to want that and I'll be making a delivery to uh, North Carolina with this piece Sometimes I ship them, but this one's just I too big to, to ship. Are you going to deliver? It's them? too big to ship. I mean, yeah. Use it's a round brush all uh, Not really. I use a round brush. Uh, I just happened to pick this one up. I'll, I, um, but I do, I do like round brushes. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a flat person. I don't like flats that much. Okay, so I'm still working. I'm getting mine back where I think I need to have it. Um, and I'm going to start laying color down just to give myself an idea where things are going. Again, I'm using a cooler palette than what was on the original um, photo reference, but it's pretty, it's, it's not too far off. Anytime I see things that look 
distinct. Like I, I see little bees over the, the butt area on this animal. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in. I don't know why they're there, but it's what I see. You see little what? Little bees. Oh, I thought you said bees. Oh. No, bees. <laughs> what? Where are you? you see that? <laughs> right. Pull your eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as good as it once was, I can tell you that. But, not, but when I'm in the early stages of a painting, and now most of us all either wear a corrective eye vision now, if we're past 40 years old, and I take my glasses off or I don't wear my glasses when I'm, I'm blocking a piece in. It's to my advantage to not be able to see the detail. And I think... Um, Is that Algerian? Now, I'm using... Um, oh, actually... I have the lizard right next to it, but that is, to answer your question, this may be Purple Lake, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. I, it almost doesn't matter yeah. what it is. I'm just using it as a color to, okay. yeah, this is Purple Lake. Is that comparable in any other? Um, if you took your diazidine purple and mixed a little burnt sienna in it, that's probably pretty close to what you would get. Okay. I like mixing. I, I don't, um, there's only time, you know, and I know that when we, when we start these workshops and everybody wants to know what, what are you using, what are you using, and what, what paints, I think if most of us have a, a pretty good idea of color mixing, we, we get to where we, we, um, um, we'll be able to come up with pretty close to whatever it is that we're working with <laughs> if you understand uh, basic color mixing. I got right now I just mixed a little burnt sienna and white and I'm only doing that so I can see I'm um, seeing the different aspects. My eyes are, when I paint I oftentimes have my eyes squinty. I'm doing this. I'm painting like this because by painting squinty I can't see the details. I don't get lost in them. Um, I'm doing both simultaneously. I'm just kind of, I, I also will tell people, do the easy stuff first. I'll lay in my, my cool dark values just so I can see where things are. And then I'll just start putting in some lighter ones next to it so I can, it will help bring the picture together for me. You work from dark to light? I generally work from dark and cool to light and warm. That's generally how I work. But, you know, just like what we were doing the flamingo yesterday, I don't, I, I, I think all rules are meant to be broken at some point. Um, see? Uh, yeah, see, <laughs> see. Um, and I say that because I don't normally work, I usually don't fill in my animal. I'll do my background first. But in this case, I'm just doing this so we can all make sure that we are kind of on the same page with our impala. And it may be a little bit different than the one in the draw in the painting. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just kind of I'm just right now it's just trying to feel out this animal. I'm not really painting it so much. I'm doing a very loose. This would almost be considered a sketch, okay? A painted sketch. And see, I can I can see a darker value in behind this leg. Any place I can put some. The legs seem very straight to me at first. But then you can see they end up having a little bit of curve to them. Maybe not as much as I put into it, so I may have to straighten them back out. Um, when I do the when I do the antlers, if you look at the reference painting as opposed to the reference picture. I used a lot of purple in the, because I just like to use purple um, and making that shine look like that. But um, I'm just kind of suggesting that there's a spiral. I'm not really painting the spirals in yet. Um, 
because there's going to be a lot of highlights that go in here, so I'm not going to get too crazy here. I'm just suggesting that's... Are you using, like, loose paint? Yes, I'm still using loose. Uh, right now, at this point, you should be able to see your canvas through your paint. Pretend you're watercolor painting at this point, that it should be that loose and that... It's super loose. And my eye is still all over my, my reference, okay? I, I am not really focusing that much on my painting itself. I'm just looking at placement. I'm not looking at detail. And, buddy, you asked me if I'm, why I'm, you know, I'm using a round. Do I use a round often? I'm using a round right now, too, because... Um, it does have a point on it. <laughs> See, there is a point. And, and it's helping me get some of the other areas, like the little sharp, tight areas that I might need. Um, so yeah, like I know I'm probably going to be cleaning up the, 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 this, this, what I call the throat latch, or the, the, um, the neck was, is probably going to be a little bit skinnier than what I initially did here. So I can already see that. I'll be coming in a little bit. So I can start to make, you know, just corrections or things that I can see right away. I start making those. And I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about them. I see that muscle. You know, I, I, you know the, the, the beautiful thing is when you look at an animal that its survival depends on its its physical attributes in this case. You know, it's the fact that these this animal has very long legs. It can... They've been known to just like prong right over, or leap right over a, um, a safari vehicle while being chased by a, <laughs> a lion. You know, it's, um, they, can, they know how to move. Um, I always want to give the animal or the subject that I'm painting um, credit, if you will, for its, its um, beautiful physical attributes that help it survive. Um, you know, if I, if I did this animal's legs too short, <laughs> if, if it was a real animal, it would probably not, it probably wouldn't be around very long. So that's when, for me, accuracy is, is key. I try to get as accurate as, a, as I can. Okay. And just like I had put a little bit more white on here. And see, to me, this animal looks a little pink in some areas. I'm going to add um, to my original mixture a little bit of, uh, I think this could be criticodrone red, but you can use alizarin in here too, the crimson, in with your burnt sienna and white. And I'm just going to kind of put some, almost makes like a penny color, looks like a copper, like a copper penny, a penny color. I'm just going to kind of highlight some of the areas on the animal. Um, that I see need to be highlights, you know, just a little bit. This is not really, like, again, this is still considered sketching because this paint is not, oops, didn't mean that color to get in there. A little bit back in there, a little bit more white. How's everybody doing? Obviously, I need more bird sand on my palette. Nobody's talking. Everybody's so quiet today. They heard themselves on the live stream after the class yesterday. That's it. They're, they're all nervous now. They're like, oh, no. We can't talk about people today. Or I could, wear, I could break out in song again if it makes you all feel better. See, nobody said anything to that either. That's what's crazy. You should have said, no, please, don't sing. Okay. And I could see that I need to move, you know, when I see that I have to move something, I'll just keep moving through it. I'm just putting up little, little hiney areas on me. There's a little, little light area here. I 
way, obviously, it's more burnt sienna on my palate. Did you all do that? No, you went to sleep, didn't you? <laughs> Matt and I went to Zaxby's last night for dinner. That's how lame we were. We just went to one little place, oh, got yeah. something to eat, and went to bed. Um, and, of course, then my son proceeded to tell me how much I snored last night, so I forgive <laughs> Telling you was tired. I was tired. I said, next time I start snoring, sweetheart, you just tell me to turn over. Okay, I am going to start working on the background soon. I just to, I just wanted to get a little bit of color in, just so I can see where things are. Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody feeling pretty good? Doing fine. <laughs> doing fine. I'm going to go squirt some more burnt sienna on my palate because I did not. I was not very generous with my squirt. I was laugh at some of my students, I'm like, oh, you're so stingy. You're so, so stingy with your paint. And uh, um, I think it was me who was stingy this time. Okay. All right, I am going to squirt some more paint out on my palette. I'm going to turn off my iPad for a second because my background is going to be completely different than the picture. Now, obviously you're looking, um, you all have your reference as far as the, uh, the painting as well as the actual photo reference that we're working from. I will tell you this. I'm going to show you how I basically did this one. I'm probably not even going to use it as a reference. I'm just going to go with it and, and see where it goes. So don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like the uh, the photo reference or the of the painting because mine's probably not going to either. And I'm telling you right now because I'm not going to sit there and stare at my painting. Um, I may change it up a little bit, but it still will be a sunset. So I'm going to use those basic sunset colors. So hopefully everybody has their. Um, yellow, um, the yellow ochres and that type of color on their palette. Let's see, why am I not finding my burnt umber, Morris Violet? I'm looking for my burnt Santa and I am not seeing it. And, oh, there it is. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. There. Oh, I had it right here. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so I'm looking at the sky color. And uh, oftentimes in a, with, a, with a type of sunset, obviously it looks kind of strange when you look at it that it's so darkish gray at the top, but nor, as you get towards a horizon line, it generally gets lighter. And in this case, we're getting orangier and brighter. And, and so I'm going to start my background color with the sky. I'm going to do a loose sketch of what I think my horizon line is going to be. And, uh, and we'll just kind of take off from there. So this is where... Um, I'm just going to do a little loose sketch of where my horizon line is going to be. And this is when you start to work on compositional aspects. If you want to change your composition in a certain way that suits you, it will not hurt my feelings because we're dealing with backgrounds at this point. I know a lot of you folks already have a lot of experience when it comes to painting um, landscapes. So if you're going to, work, if you're following along online, uh, I'm kind of I'm going all, I'm going rogue. I am going to just do my, uh, I'm not using a reference. I am just going to do a little sketch here. So what I'm going to do here is make a horizon line. I'm going to drop a horizon line. Um, I'm not even going to look at my initial, and I may actually do a slight, um, you know, maybe not make it look quite as flat. So I'm just going to go right through here um, and just kind of right through that, right through that piece. It's just a simple horizon line, but um, that gives me just a reference of where I'm going to do sky and, and plane, if you will. Doesn't matter. 
doesn't matter. I just needed to do that, and I went right through my animal. You'll notice that there's a little big line now going through my animal. No big deal. I can move that right off. But um, but it also helps where people, sometimes people do this, and then they stop, and then they try to do a continuation in their line, and it's, they kind of fail. So I don't remember this sketch. This, this animal here is just so, us, so we can see where we're going with this. So I'm going to mix a color. I'm going to actually use my palette knife because I'm pro when I want to mix a lot of color, um, I don't want to uh, um, have to keep coming back for it and remixing it and remixing it. So in this case, I'm probably going to take some yellow ochre. Um, I'll tell you, if you're ever wanting to, uh, and I guess I should be quiet, but I'm, I'm just... I never know what to say when I'm, I'm actually, now that I'm going live with this stuff, and I don't mean to be doing commercials for, because um, I don't have sponsorship, but I happen to like, there's certain paints that I like for certain colors. And I'm sure you all are the same way. You probably have brands that you prefer over others, and maybe you, like for, for me, titanium white, I prefer Winsor Newton titanium white over any. Um, but like for some of my ochres, I really like Michael Harding's brand of paint. For a lot of the ochre paints, um, I like his. I like a lot of his colors actually. Where do you get those paints? Michael Harding. Yeah. You can get it online. Um, you can get it through Jerry's. Um, oh, okay. And you're mixing the yellow. Ochre I am paint. taking yellow ochre and white, and I'm mixing it together. Okay. And I'm actually going to make a lot of it, so I'm going to grab all my white that I had here. And being that this is yellow, I'm going to be adding some of the purples to it. Um, so I'm grabbing some of the... I'm going to grab all of it. Because I don't want it to be... I'm going to make kind of an interesting yellowy gray. Yellow, ochre, and white. And some purple. And I'm get, grabbing the purple too. It's not going to look like our original painting, okay? I'm just telling you that right up front. So if, if you're looking at this and going, but it doesn't look anything like it, you'll say, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going, like I said, here's where I'm going rogue. I'm going, I'm going off the plan here. So I'm just making a color, but I want to gray it down, and this is not becoming gray enough for me. Um, and I need more purple. And I am, a, let's see, here it is. I have cobalt Q. Um, does somebody else have diazonine purple? That's better because this is not my color. I'm not. I know you girls have it over here. I don't know if have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Nothing like it. There is no substitute. There are some colors that just there is no substitute. I use dioxazine purple like crazy. I just that's I just call it purple because I usually butcher the names of most of my paints. I think we even had a Google. I think I even had to say now how do you Pinacodone is the one of one of those colors that is just like oh no I can't say that. I'm sure, I'm sure there's other artists out there that are way more refined and know their color verbiage better than I do. It's like, yeah, you know that purple that I like? That axisine purple? Yeah, that's a neat color. I like this color. Is that glass color. or acrylic? Glass. What's that? Is that glass or acrylic? Glass. That you've got in your lap. <laughs> that you have in your lap. <laughs> that sounds scary. That could break any time. <laughs> are, you, are you graying down the whole mass or saving some for later? Oh, I'll go back and make and pour some, or squirt some out if I need it. Okay. So, I'll just, <coughs> so what I'm going to do? I just asked because this is all I've got in my lap. Oh, that's all. That's all you're going to need. Okay. So I'm going to take one of my larger brushes, and I'm going to just put a little. If you have your oil out, you can go ahead and mix a little bit of oil in there. That's just going to make it a little bit more uh, fluid. And I'm just going to go up at the top of the canvas, and you're probably thinking, "Boy, that's." That's dark, but don't worry. 
the t I'm going to do the, dark, the top of the canvas a little bit darker. Generally, as you get down to a horizon line, it lightens up with the horizon line. But I'm starting this off like this. Okay? You could try to go around your painting a little bit, you know, where you've done your sketch. Um, and I'm not going to load any more paint yet. I've got it. I'm actually going to start lightening it up. Because now I'm going to switch to a lighter version. I'm going to have to squirt out some more white because I will go. I will blow through this tube of white in no time. No time. And I'm going to take the color that I was working with. I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium yellow. I'm going to add some more white. Um, and so you can see I'm mixing right on. I'm mixing, I'll call it my mother color. The color that I started with, this, the combination of the yellow ochre and the diazine purple and white. And I've taken a little bit of that color and mixed a lot more white and um, cadmium yellow light to it. And I'm going to pull some more of that purple in so it's not such a drastic change. And I'm going to go across here. Now here's the here's one of those places where you're just, you know, you got to Now I won't reload that brush with that same color again. But I will just go ahead and take it right to that line here, move across, around that horn. Now, if you have your big old brush, now I'm going to wipe my, I'm going to wipe this brush off again, because I'm going to keep working my way down. This is one of those situations where your big old brush is really ha handy. Of course, I'm keeping mine clean. And I'm just going to go ahead and blend right between those two colors, right across. I don't. I want the transition to be pretty smooth. That so second color was just adding. I yep. took to the color that you know that I had here, and I mixed on the side. Add some of it, not all of it. I didn't use all of the color. I took some of it and added the cadmium yellow light and white to it. Cadmium yellow light. Okay. Yes. And so in just making that transition, I don't want the transition to be so drastic that you say, oh, you've got like, you know, multi. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of making it, it's blended. Wipe your, wipe your blending brush off. Try to keep it clean because you may not want to introduce that same color back in. You might, but at least you'll have a choice here. Okay, then I'm going to take, start mixing some to that yellow the color that I just made, I'm actually going to play with it a little bit. I'm going to add a little cadmium to it. Um, I'm using the cadmium uh, medium. Cad red medium. Cad red medium. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. And I'm adding white too. So what is that called again? What color? Adding hot. Are we tinting? <laughs> I think we're tinting. Thank you, Linda. You little yo, yo, yo. I love it. I love my babies. Okay. Just cutting that in, cutting that in. All right, now I'm thinking, you know, as far as I'm here, I'm working. This, this um, uh, system here, I love my Edge Pro. But I'm thinking right now, because I'm working on a larger canvas, I usually work on this with when I do demos, and, and I do love it. But uh, I'm kind of thinking I would like to have Larry's system. I, I like that. I'm going to have to, I'm seriously going to look that up. Alright, come on, Sue. Pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. Pull it in, pull it in. Don't forget the oil. It'll help you blend it. Oh yeah, there we go. I didn't get to wrap the 
<laughs> no! No ugly sunsets! Dark clouds. I know it's it's striated. I get it. It's a little bit different. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and mix another color. Um, I'm gonna keep getting a little bit. Um, you know, as I move down through the the sunset, I'll keep going a little bit more intense. What color are you doing? No, the, uh, it's more before. it's more of the same with a little bit more cadmium in it. Mm -hmm. You used a rose color though. Well, oh, that was green. Never mind. Actually, this is mostly just cadmium red. Okay. Cadmium red with white in it. You know, just, you know, if you have to go through your animal a little bit, it's okay as long as you can still see it. Um, I'm just, because we will be backlighting this animal, okay? I mean, it will have a little rim of light around it. And you can probably bring this color all the way to your horizon line. And um, we'll probably even lighten it up again with some more color. Because remember, we will be highlighting around, or backlighting, I should say, the Impala. Now, I'm not going real heavy with my paint. I still am, use, I am using the... Um, the um, a little bit of the oil in there just to keep it a little bit more fluid. Um, let me move through it a little bit. I'm going to take my uh, my big brush it's, and I can see a lot of interesting swirly colors here and I'm just trying to clean that up a little bit. I don't want it to be so... But I'm keeping my paint really thin, okay? I just want, and I can even move it up if I thought there's too much of that yellow and it looks too strange, like it, like it's ill-placed. Ill I'm just going to run it through the rest of the painting. And I just wanted to have a nice kind of, and it's funny because in the, in the um, picture, it's, it's um, you can see it. It looks like the transition's pretty smooth. I think it looks prettier or more intense on the actual canvas, um, but that's okay. And I'm, I'm going to look and see if there's anything that I want to change here. Um, I may add, just to, just to pizzazz it up a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit more of the cadmium because you know what? I had it out from yesterday. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead. This is where you're allowed to take some artistic license. It's all right. We've all seen some pretty fantastic sunsets. Um, I would love to see, see some fantastic sunsets in Africa. Haven't done that yet. But like I said, it's definitely on that list. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if I like that color in there. I'm just going to introduce that a little bit, just to, because I've got to, I'm going to put some kind of a horizon, like mountains or plants or trees or something in the background too, so I'm just going to call it, because we will have some, a uh, lot of plant life and things in here too. Now, obviously, compared to the original painting where the impala takes up the major portion of the uh, canvas, in this case, we have a lot more to view, if you will. Uh, the, uh, the impala is in it. Obviously, still the primary subject of the painting, but not as big as it is in the original painting. I'm going to go ahead and with the same colors that we were using for the background, we're going to, I'm going to introduce like a, like hills or mountains or some type of, you know, because we dropped that horizon line and I'm going to use a lot of the same colors. I may put a little bit of burnt sienna in there just to give it a little substance, but I'm going to come back here at the horizon line. You can see I'm using, just kind of suggesting a, like a purple plain of some, you know, like a mountain or a hill or something back here. But, you know, I think we were talking a little bit about lost edges and soft edges and all these good things. Um, when you're putting in your, your mountain in the background, you should barely be able to see the difference between where one starts and one stops. Where, where the horizon start, you know, where the sky starts or stops and the mountain starts. You should not have a distinct ridge of paint. These tell me you don't have that. This should, it should be that soft. Um, we, we want it to look 
like you can't really tell because that gives us also the illusion of distance okay we want it to look like it's off in a distance we don't want it to be so sharp we save a lot of our sharp focus and detailed stuff for the foreground okay One, two, three. three. Uh -huh. um, it's it's cadmium and white mixed in with a little bit of the yellow. Yeah, you need to use your blending brush and start. That's you like use some the wrong colors. Yeah, that looks like you got green in there somewhere. No green. Yeah, yeah. What color do you use? With, um, with white. Yes, and the purple and the cadmium uh, black. Okay, I'm gonna come over there and help. Okay, as soon as I get this mountain in here, I'm gonna come over and see how everybody's doing. Mm. <laughs> oh gosh! My <laughs> God! And red and white. Yep. And I don't want a whole lot of brush strokes in my mountain, so I'm really being careful not to. If I do, those strokes should be looking like mountain strokes, even if they're very subtle. Meaning, I'm going to create that look of like it's coming down, or like there's a hill, or a, I'm just moving my stroke. I'm being, I want to make sure I have that fade. I don't want a distinct line here. So if you're looking um, on the, on the, um, up on the monitor there, up on the screen, you're going to just see that I'm really fading off that line. I don't want it to be that distinct. I'm actually going to run a little bit of a purple at the horizon. I'm, I'm kind of using my I'm going because I already know I have paint on my canvas that's wet. I know I can blend on my canvas. So I'm going to put a little bit of, ugh, maybe, maybe I spoke too soon. Okay, a little bit of the purple and I wanted it to blend. There we go. And I'm going to suggest that there's trees or something off in the background. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, we're going to call them trees. But it's, it's something that's, it's still the light because at sunset, you know, our, the light gets distorted. It'll look different. Okay, yes, the should fourth be. Color, yeah. The fourth color down is It's peachy. more cadmium. It's more peachy, so I added more more cads to it. Did you add the cad orange? No, I was using cad red medium. So I got that looking too purple. I want it to blend. Now I also know that I am going to have a lot more cooler colors going into my piece here. So I'm okay with it looking kind of strange at first when it looks like, why do you have this, this wildly purple tree line or whatever it is that you have in the background? And I think it will actually make more sense later. Remember I went rogue on this here because I'm bad like that. I like it. And as I get right to the right to the actual horizon line, right where the where the grass and stuff will start, I'm going to go ahead and make it a more distinct line. Okay, I'm going to walk around and see where we're at. Okay, see how everybody's doing. You know the two problem children. Yeah. <laughs> we are the problem children. Okay, now you know what? Do you have your big brush? No, no, yeah, your big, 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 this one. Mm -hmm. Your blending brush. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a nice soft one. Um, see how hard I'm being? I'm just really worried that working again. Now, your your does not look like cadmium. This looks more like uh, as a lizard. Really? Okay. It's not. I you know what brand what brand paint do you use? Well, it was the Yeah, but what was the brand? Was it Gambling? What's that one with the light over there? Um, that's just Grumbacher. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it just, it, it's, uh, and it's, mm -hmm. oops, I get to Okay, I don't Bob know. Ross. Bob Ross is funny. I know you all love the, the, love the product. I have to say, um, 
I, I had one of my, my students that used to have a Bob Ross black. And I'm sorry, it's it not. It, it to me, it's more like paint gray. Yeah. It's a very bluesy black. It's just not. And I'll say, you know, we. I'll say, get your, get out your, because that's the product that she has. I'll say, get out your Bob Ross black or paint gray, <laughs> because it's it's so yeah, not. I've had a lot of purple on that black. If you get a reason. But I had all this with my black. Right. I just, I, but I I know it's so different. It's so it distinctly different. And I'm just kind of running this through and just really working it in. But I, I can see that you're, this, this is a funny color to me because look how orange mine I know, is. And I did not, like you had put orange in it. and I used my cat. <laughs> so that's why it's kind of different that yours is that different. If you'll let okay, me, like let it. me try uh, and see where yours is and see if I can add a little bit more orange to it. Um, I don't know why that is. Uh, it, sh it shouldn't be a good thing. But, um, Where's the cat? Here's your pink one. Yeah. But this is your cat medium. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is cat like. Yeah. Now see that everybody wants to lighter to me than that color red. Let's go ahead and add an orange too, just for whatever reason. Mine didn't do that. I don't know why. Uh, what product I was using. Are you using hues? Or the, is it straight on tag? Okay. Yeah, it's good. I only have one hue and I didn't put it out. Oh. And what color did you use for the mountain? It's orangey. I, I burnt sienna. Oh, okay, straight burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, but I'm working into a wet, a sweat surface, so. Oh, this may be kind of cool, though. I like that. Can I just work it back in with this? You're fine. I, you'll be able, you'll be fine. And, and every sunset is bunch. Every sunset's a little different. See, I mine. I'm not really using mine as a. Okay, and I'm watching your stroke, and you're kind of wishy-washy side side. Yeah. Try to when you're when you're working on your paint. And I'm gonna let, let you stand up for a second. Okay. You know, you're like hugging. She's gonna make me stand again. And I'm not only kind of digging your. I really just want to sit in your cushion on your chair. Yeah. Really what it is. I, I make people get up so it's one of the sunsets at the house. That's a gorgeous sunset, yeah. right? Yeah. Beautiful. This yeah. looks like you're not using enough paint too. Well, I got in the wrong color. Okay. <laughs> Let's okay. see if we can get you on track with something here. Like you ever, like I said, it doesn't matter if everybody is a little bit different. I'm grabbing some of that. And you have Daxony, purple, and this one. That is purple. Yeah, I was using here. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. 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 Now, I see you doing like this. Uh -huh. Try to go a little bit more. Really push it in, too. You're using a pretty, you're using a very fine canvas. This is like portrait grade. So you don't have a lot of tooth on it. You might have to really push it in there. And you use straight burnt sand. Yeah, but I was working into a wet surface, so make sure you're working wet. Okay. Too. I've been taught to do that extra. I do that too. But uh, you're working on, it looks the, I, you shouldn't see that much of this. It's too squishy because you're not getting the coverage. So if you're using thinner paint, um, that, sh that squishy stroke's going to show. Um, and that's why, I, because you're using you have thinner paint, I didn't want you to do that on this particular. You go, get your, I'm sorry, I got paint on here. But you get your coverage on there. Once you get your coverage and you can smooth it back out, mm -hmm. um, that's probably a little bit more accurate. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to grab some of the white and go back into our mother color. A little bit of this yellow. <laughs> grab and some of your oil. A little bit more. Let's be careful because there's some green here. Yeah. Don't want green. Yeah.
have a wet surface to see what happens. We're going to go ahead and add that in there. And you want your mountain fairly straight? Do we no, do you make your mountains straight? however you want okay. them, but just make sure that you don't have a, a distinct line mm -hmm. where one starts and one stops. I want, you know, soft edges, soft edges. This is a nice canvas, too. I like your canvas. Yeah, blue labels are, I, I like them for portraits, but I usually work on linen. Yeah, when I'm doing portrait it's work. It's getting expensive, but it seems like they're going up and up. Well, I'm going to grab your little, this is Just kind of rub that in there so we don't have a distinct line here. Mm -hmm. Run them down a little bit. Yeah, sometimes you have to, like right in this little transition line right there. And I'm just kind of moving it. And it's, see, that's, that's looking better. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just kept moving down, just moving through. Um, I had a little bit of this here. How's everybody doing? Yeah, nobody's. I don't hear the. Oh. <laughs> That's a good sign. If I don't hear that noise. Do you have a problem with the mountains mm -hmm. being well like this? I like the way textures. It textures great, but not in the background. You, in this case, you don't want to take you you know the, unless you have just a little bit because that you're the direction that your stroke is going and it happens to have some. You don't want you save your detail and see. I'm watching your stroke bay and you're just haphazardly stroking. Yeah. Don't haphazard. Have purpose to your stroke, so that you, if you're going to do a mountain, and I'll show you on, I'll show you on uh, ants, okay? So you don't, because I think that we always think, oh, we just kind of la da da da, it's going to happen, all of a sudden it's going to be magic, and you're going to be happy with it, and that doesn't usually happen, unfortunately. Um, and so you can see, I'm kind of doing that lazy stroke, just that squishy squashy stroke. So I'm just trying to get the paint that's currently on your brush off, and we're going to use it to blend. Um, I'm cutting in underneath the, and then, you know, if we've got this on here, let's use it, but then we can change whatever we're going to put on here. So, like, oops, 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 that right away. Um, so here, if we wanted to do something a little bit more interesting with the horizon line, we'd go a little bit more intensely. Um, just put it in the Yeah, that, it knows it happens. Make your, your, make your, your sunset even more interesting. But since it is a sunset, we're going to keep it. No, no, that. No, let's just use your, your brush. I don't know who you've got all these spots. Get that all cleaned up like that. Where that can be. That's my head. She was on that thing. That's, that's part of doing good. We'll just go with it. Oops, get those lines out. Yeah. Um, okay. Now what I was, was going to show you, so you can take a bunch of food. We're going to go ahead and put a mount in. And I just used burnt sienna. Oh, I think you have your stuff labeled. I usually just find my color. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold them. Oh, I think I'm getting older all the time. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to die to me. So I'm just going to kind of suggest that it doesn't see. Instead of just going like this and saying, okay, here's my mountain, I'm going to make sure that my mountain has purpose. And if I'm going to have any texture, I'm going to make it look like it's going in the direction. But you straightened yours up. See, I've got mine. Well, she has it. Yeah, you can. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, because mountains don't usually run at an angle. That's what you're saying. I. Um, I didn't put that much of a hill. I just put a little bit of a hill. Um, yeah, you can make it higher on one end and lower, but straighten it up if you want to. Um, I, I thought you meant the actual. Um, so like here, we can just you know go across like that and make this whole thing. That's what she's saying. So I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit down here, a little tiny here. And yes, I'm using that same road. But I'm not going to. I'm just putting that in the paint coverage. 
And you'll just kind of put that in like that. And here's where you have to have that soft, that soft area. Where we have that wet paint and we're just pushing up into it. I don't like to have that ridge of paint. Right. And we like to have those lost edges. We don't want to be able to have people say, because remember, it's all in the distance. And things that are in the distance, this is also sunset. We are not going to have soft, the sharp focused eyes when our light is dim. Right? So I'm just bringing that down. Then I'm tapping out the brush a little bit, taking off some of the paint. We don't need to have a lot of paint here. Remember, we're going to also have the animal itself is going to be backlit. Uh, so there's going to be light around the animal. So it's going to have that contrast. So we don't want a lot of... Um, and in your case, since we have this neat... We're going to have this hill. I probably wouldn't put the purple line up here. And then down here... Um, oh, okay. Well, you can, but since you've got your hills a lot more drastic and so in the same space, I would suggest that back here, you can just kind of, whatever you want to do, I'm going to let you figure it out. But I wouldn't do it from here, because it, it won't make sense. So if you're going to have trees back here or whatever you have down here, you're just going to bring it up a little bit. But you're going to probably want to skew some of that. That yeah. Okay, right? Uh, that much better. And then you can do your little your little dark line, but that's that that looks a lot more believable. Well I went in I graduated in seventy five and went in at that point. That's pretty. That's different too. Oh I like yours. That looks good. That looks good. You, you've got you've got a little bit of texture going on in yours, are you wanting to leave that texture? I see your brush stroke is going like this. Yeah, I like that. That's, I mean, that's, I like it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you you can't have that. That's, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And this, and I like your soft, soft edges in here. I'm not even, that's fine. That looks good. That looks good. I'm not even touching it. I'm not even touching yours either. Oh, um, okay. I like, I'll tell you another thing. What I like about yours, you've got your lightness at the horizon line. You can always soften this line just a little bit more. Okay. And by softening it, you can just use a clean brush if you've got a softer brush like a sable. You can go in there and just just make sure that it's not so distinct like day and night. This because remember this is sunset, our lights diminish. We're not going to see as see as well at night. So this is going to be it's going to be hard to tell with the with the lines. But the, I think your I think your sky looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah, And I think you you got the right idea. I still see way too much canvas. Yeah, are you using are you are you using that brush to do the application? No. Oh, okay. Okay. You could use even a bigger one. Yeah, we have a linen canvas. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have a big old blending brush? Do you have a blending brush? No, no. I'm not here. I can drink something from home. Well, if you use all fresh, you want to use one more? Can you use your just that with that blending brush real quick? Well, sure. Yeah. It's got a little bit on it, but here's just super soft. And it's oh, soft. yeah, this will this will this will do it. But let's say if this is you you just it's, it's too uh, itchy. Yeah. You've got too much uh, that money blanket. You've got to have more things on there. Yeah, let's, let me show you. Let me get in there and see what you got. So I know you made all these So when you're doing your application, because I was working on um, Anne's canvas was, she was a nice, nice, uh, smooth. <laughs> 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 you did I think you kind of. Yes. 
Yeah. More yeah. energy? Yeah. Let's put, then let's put a lot more yellow and white in there and see what happens, okay? Yeah. Okay. Just start moving this color in there and see what happens. All right. Yeah, because and then just work your way up to the to the middle section. Okay. Okay. Oh, so this is what I did. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Now I'm going to take a look at my original piece. Oh yeah, that's what I had. All right. Obviously I did it a lot different and I'm going to be working a little differently on this. I may make this animal sit on a little hill, stand on a hill, just because it's so different from my original composition that I did. And I'm, I, I'm going to work my head around it a little bit. I'm just going to suggest that there's another little area here that that he's standing on. Um, I know I'm going to have some kind of plant life. I like that particular plant that I had. So everybody, I mean, you know, this is one of those things that um, I think is important that we talk about a little bit because I, like I said, I had gone rogue on this piece, meaning I have gone off the uh, original plan here of what my what my piece looked like when I painted it the first time. Um, but composition, um, some people have a really strong sense of composition, others just kind of are winging it. A, co a composition should lead your eye someplace. You know, if we just have all these elements haphazardly placed on a canvas and it's unorganized or has no rhyme or reason, it's really hard to, um, it, it will make for a confusing piece sometimes. In this case, I know this animal is looking off. He's, he's, I, the title of the painting was called The Sentinel because he's the buck of that herd. He's, he's, and he's, even though they, there's oftentimes many um, that are in that herd, um, he's, he's watching. He's watching to make sure that there's no, he's got um, a line. Yeah, so. he's <laughs> making sure that, that his family's safe, so to speak. So um, I know that he's looking out this way. So his eye has already been led out this way. I'm, and I will have some tall plant life up in here, sort of like what's in the original piece, but I want to lead the eye in a direction. I want to have some weight on one side, this animal here, and I, I am one to not normally want to stick the subject directly smack dab in the center of a canvas, okay? I almost always have them off to one side or up to the upper half of the canvas or whatever. In this case, he's pretty much, he's not exactly smack dab, but he's pretty, he's pretty central to that piece. So I am going to obscure some of this by probably putting plant life and things that are going to come up here so that it has an element of composition that's leading your eye. His eye is gazed out to this direction someplace. I want to lead the eye in that direction. So I'm probably going to be making some lines and, and things that are going to pull you in that direction. Okay, and that would be a compositional element. And here I'm just making little lines haphazardly through the piece. But so in a sense, I'm going to try to lead your eye to this direction. Okay, and I'm, I'm making these arrows. You know, I don't need you to make the arrows, but I'm just trying to show you for, in, for teaching purposes. I am leading your eye away. And so I'm going to add some height on this side of the animal over here and creating that look. He's going, something's, he's got his eye on something out here. Um, if I wanted to, it might be neat if I actually put some grazing impala in here. I've, been, I've done that with some of my other pieces because I'm trying to tell a story. But for demo purposes, I'm not going to do that tonight, today. But, <clears throat> So keeping in mind that really the composition is is paramount in any painting we're doing. Um, and I think it's something that oftentimes um, instruction workshops lack teaching us about composition. Uh, it's one of the primary elements in any good painting. Um, so I'm, I'm going ahead and mentioning that. So I am going ahead and, and making this a little bit elevated here. I want to lead the eye in this direction so that um, I may actually make furrows in the grass leading in that direction. Make what? Furrows, just oh. direction of gra grass oh, okay. being leading in that direction. I want to be able to um, convey something in this piece other than just the fact that there's an impala standing there. 
I just want motion, movement, anything that is pulling our eye into a direction. So with me just making these little, you know, haphazard lines, I'm going to try to use that as a guide, if you will. And I know I'm going to have like some pl plant life and stuff um, that's go going in this direction and I may actually have some of it leaning over and falling and also leading the eye in that direction. So when you're looking at a good painting by somebody and you're really, your eye is just really, you're just really focused on it. You don't know why you like it, but you know you're looking at it. That's because they probably did something right with the composition. They are making you, they're pulling you into that painting so you're looking harder. You had mentioned the artist that does the waves. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is somebody who knows waves. You've got somebody who's a surfer. This dude knows his waves and he knows what, and he knows what he likes, what pulls him into a wave. So there he's going to pull you into that wave too because he has that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously there's, there's, the, there's, there's, there's the movement of the water and there is a compositional element even to making a wave. And I'm sure he, by no mistake, he's, he's pulling you there. Yeah. So that's what makes a painting a success. Is, 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 it's one of the many things that can make a painting a success, but composition is, is a basic element. And so when we're in the beginning stages of a painting, I know this is somewhat of a demo and we're talking about, but I, I think it's important that we understand that we need to understand basic compositions of element. We know about the composition, uh, the element of three. We've heard that before. Um, there's all different kinds of different compositional, I don't want to say rules, but yeah, rules that a lot of artists use um, in making a successful piece. In this case, I'm just going to do, I'm going to be more like leading the eye. So I've got to just making these hatch marks and all this stuff in here to, to help me uh, focus on what's going on here. Um, I know that there's going to be tall plants here. Um, I, want, I never want to make the animal seem that he's vulnerable, <laughs> like out in the open, like he's just standing there like a sitting duck. So part of me naturally wants to put grass and in and, 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 and obscure lines and things like that that's going to break up maybe its silhouette against a sunset. Mm -hmm. So a prowling big lion or a leopard is going to see him. I don't want to make him vulnerable. So I am going to kind of move in that direction. Or should we put the lines there just to give us an idea? But I just did that so you can see what, where my brain is going. Those lines will disappear. You will not see those. Okay. okay? Um, what I'm fixing to do here is uh, um, I am going to uh, start laying down some background color here. Now, when things are far away, they tend to be lighter in value and cooler in temperature. Okay? We're talking about grass at sunset. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if I... I, I think I did try to make that grass seem cooler and lighter in the background and it got warmer as it got close in the, but I'm going to probably make it a little bit more distinct in this demo. So I want it to look, you know, the light tends to, you know, when, when there's diminished light, we get less, we see less, obviously, right? And the colors tend to have, um, there's less distinction in greens and blues, we really can't tell them apart that much when the light gets darker. So we, we want to keep our colors kind of muted, but we still want to m make sure that we're practicing the idea that things in the background tend to get lighter in value and cooler in temperature. So we're doing sunsets here and, and diminished light. So I'm going to take, I'm going to actually take the mother color that I started at the top here because it's on my palette. and. Making it not so, uh, you know, keeping a more limited palette is also another successful way to make a good painting. So I'm just going to, eh, that's not, that's still not right for me. I'm going to add some more white. A little bit more. What was the mother color again? It was, <laughs> it was yellow ochre, yellow. diazonine purple, and white.
And even though I, I told you I'm not going to, those lines are going to disappear, they will disappear, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm just letting my, my brain see them a little bit more. I'm just putting them a little bit in there. I'm going to add a little bit more of the yellows to that color. Let's start bringing it in. But I'm leaving the horizon line a little bit lighter. And I'm probably going to, even if it's a subtle difference where I'm, my color change is happening, but it is following that kind of that direction. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing, this is, like I said, some of this is happening as <laughs> by accident. I'm just doing it and seeing where it goes here because it is different than my original composition. Of, um, and I'm kind of peeking every now and then, peeking over my shoulder, and I'm, I'm really wanting to do it different. So what color did you use to make the brown? Which brown? The tan, the, the, right underneath the honey. Um, Color. This color here? Yeah. This color? That is, I actually used um, the yellow ochre that we started with, the yellow ochre white, and, and I added more. So what I was calling the mother color that we started up here, yes. um, I added white to it, and then I added more cadmium yellow to it. And I'm just going to start adding a little bit more interesting colors to it, just so it's as it gets closer to the foreground, it's starting to get a little warmer, a little brighter. Um, I'm using a little bit more cadmium yellow medium, or no, I'm sorry, this is cad yellow deep, but I'm mixing it in with some of the other color so that I don't have the drastic change in color here. So, you know, anytime you're working and you're blending colors um, from your, uh, on your canvas, it's good to keep your, whatever you start with, so you can blend a little bit of that into the rest of the piece. Remember that we are going, going to backlight this animal, so we will have that lighter um, halo effect, if you will, around this impala. Um, I, I keep telling you this, even though I know you probably can see that from the picture, the original painting, but the reason I'm reminding you this is as much reminding myself of this, because you remember how I'm always telling you to take advantage of contrast when you can? If I have something that's the same value, I don't want that, so I will want things to be darker in the background since I know I'm going to outline this animal. I'm just going to go ahead and cover this up here. probably going to add some more texture to the background. Remember I said I wanted to leave the eye a little bit. Excuse me. So with that said, I'm going to go back to my round, a um, little bit coarser brush. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of orange. Um, if you want to add a little cad to it, that's okay. You won't hurt my feelings. Yeah, uh, CAD red medium. Okay. And I'm going to move some grass in here. I'm just going to move some grass very loosely. I'm not going to uh, suggest that it's, but I'm also leading your eye. Well, you know what? I'm going to do it a little differently because things are in the background. And a lot of this is going to get, the detail will get brushed out. And we're not, and sometimes the lines won't be that obvious. I don't want to make it look like it's a bunch of corn, you know, like somebody planted corn and it's 
and rows and rows of corn, but I do want to kind of make that look so it's, and I will put detail in eventually, but right now I'm not. Just going to kind of very subtle on some of this. Now, with that kind of, with that idea, I mean, I'm going to stand back and kind of look and sing. Yeah, it does kind of make me look off in the direction. I'm going to make my light values a little bit lighter in some areas. Oh, I heard that. What was that? Was that you, Hillary? Yeah. What did you say? What's not looking good, hon? Oh, I'm just like looking at my pukey colors. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're what? Excuse me, what? <laughs> you pukey colors? Pukey. Oh, pukey. Pukey oh. pee pee. It's a, <laughs> I guess I could go oh, in this direction. I'm just, I'm not really making, um, because I'm still in the background, and remember, I'd like to save my detail for the foreground. I'm not putting a lot of detail, but I am putting a little bit of texture, lighter texture in my background. It's very subtle, but I, I wanting, I'm doing this just simply to, and I have to remember, I am going to be backlighting this animal. There I am, reminding myself again. Hey, are you going to backlight this animal? <laughs> You know, I was thinking about backlighting this animal. I think that's a great idea. You think? Okay, I was thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. If the posse loves me. That's right. It's one of the many reasons. Actually, I will say this. One of the other amazing things about Linda here is she was one of the... She took on, very early on when she was working with me, uh, a, a portrait of herself. And it was done in like... As if you were tripping on LSD. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to say it. It was like psychedelic, wild colored, wildness. But it was one of the most effective, wonderful portraits. I loved it. I absolutely loved her piece that she did. And um, I, I, it's still one of those pieces that I talk about. I still talk about it. It's legendary, Linda. It's, it's, it's a legendary piece. And I love it. Absolutely love that piece. Her trippy piece. Um, I'm also bringing my a little bit of my purples down very subtly but I'm just kind of bringing them down into my um, into into the background here a little bit uh, I think you can see what I'm doing here I'm not I don't want it to look um, very distinct I, I just want to add some interest again back to the whole leading the eye thing. I just want it to be a little bit in here. And then I'm going back in with lighter colors again. How's everybody doing? Great. 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 Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Larry's great, y'all. I just want to, I'm a, he's, he's doing great. Oh, no, there's plenty, there's plenty. I, I think people are uh, underestimating their, their own abilities here sometimes. It's funny, I can't help but see this animal, even though this is Africa. I keep thinking of a white-tailed buck looking at a cornfield. Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't help but see it. I just. Um, we're gonna have to definitely bring this animal into Africa here before too long. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lighten some of the other. I'm, I'm adding some more white to my yellowy color that I have created here. That color again is the. Um, it's got yellow ochre and purple, but I've added more of the cadmium yellow light and white. And I might actually start making some of these a little bit of detail, not much. And and, and just because I say that um, um, 
uh, I'm doing the background and then I'm going to jump into the animal, the impala. Doesn't mean that I won't return to some of the background later. Remember, we do have Sunday to work on this too. So we're, I'm just kind of suggesting that I'm putting these, a little bit of this in. I'm not, and it's still considered a background. So I'm not putting that much detail in here, but I just want to kind of make it interesting here. There's just enough of the dark values of the darker sienna type of grass that will make this look like it's leading the eye. Just a little bit, not a lot. Sometimes it doesn't take very much to have that happen for you. Um, there will be some heavier, darker grasses in the foreground here. So um, a lot of this will be kind of disappear. And I may actually add some more. Um, details in, in different colors of grass and I'm always having to keep in mind that this is a sunset so I can't have too much the, the light is diminished and I'm not going to be able to see that much question on composition yes <clears throat> for some reason I always thought that light with the lighter colors led your eye mm -hmm. In this case, it looks like they're darker colors. So well, I haven't gotten, remember, see what I'm doing here? Yeah. I'm actually adding in some of the lighter, but I'm not going to, because we have diminished light, I'm not going to add bright, bright lights in here. Okay. Okay, I, I do want, I do want to have that in there, but I don't want to make it so distinct that it's, because I know that we wouldn't be able to see it. Okay. Um, is my eye following the cornrows? I uh, don't say cornrows. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the cornrows. It, it, it's or, or trying to light between them. Hmm. Well, that's the shadow that the corn would the cornrows. <laughs> See now you got me saying it. <laughs> the the dark values are are actually leading you here, uh, but the light values are going to be on top of it. So it's almost like those are the shadows. Okay, They're, it's going to be so that you don't even know it. You don't even, you're being led and you won't even know it when it's okay. all said and done. Okay. And of course I've got, now, I, I would tell you that normally I would have the benefit of knowing where the painting is going, but like I said, I went rogue on this. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, we'll see where it's going, but that's my intention. I'm, I'm actually gonna start adding some dark values too, even to this grass in the foreground. Um, but I can't get too far ahead of myself because I have to get this, this animal in. So, um, like by adding, oh, I did have that color there, didn't I? So your eyes following the light then, as I thought, or? Yeah, I just want a little bit of what's going on here to be pulling you out. I'm not going to try to define that it's the light or the dark, or it's the lines, it's the color, it's the, um, the contrast between, you're, you're able to see that there's something that's pulling you in a di okay. direction. There's going to be plant life that's going to be here, and even the direction that the, a lot of the grasses are going to be going. Mm -hmm. So like I may have, and I'm adding some um, some diazonine purple to this, to this uh, um, okay. burnt umber. Okay, so it's not necessarily the light or the dark, it's just the it's object. Actu the actual objects are going to be pulling you too. Okay. Um, I don't want to... Um, I'm not going to put a lot of detail into this yet, um, but I am going to put some, just as much to help me see it. Okay. Um, because I know I'm going to put basically that same plant in here. Okay. But even just, just doing this is going to... And you have your round brush built? I am. I'm using, um, I'm using a number eight power <coughs> curl. Um, it's just a it's just a synthetic boar bristle. About the composition, then the the tree line then will keep me from leaving the canvas and coming back to the to the antelope or the white-tailed deer. <laughs> the white-tailed yes, deer. We're seeing that now. I'm sorry. Are you talking about that the tree that's going to be no, here? No, I'm just looking at the one you've got. I mean, you're doing now. It's just thinking ahead. See, what's I uh, I know. For example, I'm going to make this dark. So I might as well just do this dark here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be like those colors. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to go ahead and let's just do it now. And I'm, I'm putting a little bit of the purple in with my browns here. Okay. So what's going to keep my eye from leaving the canvas? 
the, the tree line in the back? I want your, I want your, way, as far as leaving the can, leading or leaving? Leaving. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Stay tuned. You're going to be, you're going to be fixed. Okay. Okay. Stay, stay tuned. Okay. Stay tuned. All right. Because what's what I'm wanting to happen, I want you to wonder what this animal's looking at. His even his gaze, like in the, he he's just kind of looking. He's a sentinel. He's just he's kind of watching everything. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna put this in here. Right now he's looking at me. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Maybe he will be. Maybe that's going to keep you from leaving. Yeah. Leaving Poor the thing. canvas, as you said. I'm just going to put this in here, because I don't want to get too much into this yet. But I might as well go ahead and soften some of the area that I want to do. Compositionally, when I put this plant up in here, and have the grass in the foreground. This background is going to be very subtle. It's not even going to be that much. The fact that this animal is going to be dyna dynamically lit and will have a, a lot of detail and a strong presence, that alone should keep you, keep you focused on what's going on here. At least I feel fortunate that knowing that the piece that this piece here got juried into a very good show and it had jurors that are representing um, the wildlife uh, community, uh, artist community uh, from the uh, different art museums, curators from different art museums. Um, who were all the judges? I, they, they, had, they had their list of judges. Some of them were sculptors, but uh, there was artists and curators alike that judged this and they liked the piece enough to put it into the show so I know that I was effective on the composition aspect on this one which makes me happy because again it was not I used my references simply as references and I did not rely on them for my composition or my color all right now I'm probably going to just put a little bit of something going on here from this I'll put a little bit, I'm breaking my own rules because this is considered foreground, but since I have a wet surface here, um, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of these, like just loose, I'm using the tip, the very tippy, tippy, tippy end of my brush, of my round brush to create some interest here. Um, there will be even more stuff going in here later. And this is something that I've done before, so it's not like I'll have some of it look kind of like it's disappearing or faded because it's a little bit in the distance, but not as distance as you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll have more depth in it. But I do want to take advantage of the wet surface. Sometimes you can tell too when you're getting your brush is getting overloaded. I usually try to keep my paint just at the tip of the brush. Um, I don't like to get it too overloaded, but sometimes it happens. Also, <laughs> I see an opportunity for a good place to sign my painting, which will probably be right in this area here. Yeah. Um, I know that sounds like a pretty diva-esque thing to say. <laughs> Where will I put my signature? But um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm being legit on that one. Because knowing where to put a, where your signature sometimes is a hard, um, yeah, hard place to know. And I'm just kind of, and I'm diffusing the look. I don't want this to be detailed yet. It's just what I'm relying on now with what I'm doing exactly, you know, right now is contrast, not detail. But I do want to keep my lines pretty small and thin. Because when I actually get in here and start putting, a lot of it will get very intense and very dark. Now a lot of animals will get up on a higher even if it's just a little bit of a vantage point to, for observation. You know, the, uh, like meerkats like to use termite hills. A lot of animals use termite hills. I love 
They are funny little guys. They're so funny to watch. And, and evidently, they're not really afraid of like uh, people too much. Because uh -huh. I guess people are not really considered a threat to them. And I've, I know of photographers that will be out and they're trying to get these shots and they'll climb up right up on your back. You know, it's just like, hey, what you doing? What you doing? I'm like, hey, you're a high vantage point. I can get up on your back <laughs> right now. Okay, so a lot of this is going to get really, really dark. I'm not going to, because I want this dark in here. So I'm just going to kind of throw down some dark purples. I'm putting purples, a little bit of black even. I'm just going to start putting dark values in here. Dark values, dark values. Yeah, even my grass is kind of going in that direction too. Well, it's it's subtle. I'm not like bending it all over completely, but okay. Okay. Now I'll let that sit for a second. How's everybody doing? Yeah, I haven't done yet. Super <laughs> fantastic. I'm going to start jumping into the Impala here in a second. About time. About time? No. About time. Is it eating time? What time is it? It's 12 for 7. I didn't even realize it was this late. It's, it's almost 1 o'clock. I, I have someone who's hungry. Is there ever people getting hungry? Okay, I didn't even realize it was this late. See, time flies when you're all having fun. Yeah. All right, this is not a bad place to stop if you if you get to that place where you feel like you've got some pretty good coverage. Leg dropper, Betty. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was this late. I knew we started. I thought, oh, you know, we started ten. We started a little bit before ten, and before you know it, it's almost one o'clock. I didn't even know. I think it's diabetic. I don't know if anybody is a diabetic. Is there is, is there anybody here diabetic? What? No, is anybody here diabetic? No, but I don't like to miss meals. <laughs> I obviously don't either, but I'm just saying, I, I don't ever, if somebody ever needs to speak up and say, okay, look, I'm about to keel over because, like, I've not eaten, <laughs> or I need to eat again, that, that, that's okay, you will not hurt my feelings. So, when everybody feels like they're at a good place to stop, we'll stop, grab a bite to eat. So, I'm nowhere near. Okay. I got okay. for you to do. Should I have to, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. Yeah. You're not going to eat? No. Okay. Um, I have snacks. You have snacks? Okay. I will I take my son out. All the instructors so to sign my shirt. Oh! <laughs> Yay! So you just have to find a place. I think there's some in the front. Oh, well, 